Another type of way we can produce light is through the process of atomic transition. This gives rise to what's known as the atomic spectra. So this is going to be maybe a little bit of a longer video, but not too bad. So just bear, bear with us, and we'll get through everything, and hopefully it'll be clear at the end. So we're going to look at atomic spectra. And what happens is that uh, atoms can absorb energy. Atoms are molecules. And when this happens, uh, there's various ways that we can actually absorb this energy. Maybe we electronically um, give it some energy. Maybe we uh, give it because of collision. Maybe we absorb some light. Well, at the end, when it comes down to it, we get some energy. And it moves from, we move the molecule from what we consider a ground state, or what it wants to be in, its equilibrium kind of state, to an excited state. Or we move from an excited state to another excited state. We keep talking about these these states, and these states is really what is the configuration of the atoms in it? Are they moving? Are they is the atom rotating? Does the uh, do the electrons are they in a higher state? This is you know kind of chem chemistry stuff we you may have seen before. But what we're talking about is there's different ways for this to to um, start to gain energy. As I said, it might be able to, to vibrate or rotate or something. But in general, when it comes down to it, we get graphs that are we, what are energy versus distance graphs. And really what it expresses is four different configurations. If the, for instance, the atom is, starts with an electron in its lowest state, its n equal 1 state, well, then we look over and we can see that it has an energy. And sometimes you'll see in this one, this is a very simple form that the distance really doesn't matter. But some of these pictures you'll see will actually have a displacement value where you'll get a curve that looks something kind of like that. So different levels uh, could be, exist only at uh, certain distances. So what we start doing is what we really want to look at is the transition from one state to another. And when an atom is in this state, it has a certain amount of energy. So if it changes, uh, that's when we're going to start seeing that. So what we mean, a little bit more clear on the spectra stuff, uh, the lines, is that we start with a nucleus. When we put our first state, the electron in this case, we'll have an energy when it goes to be in this orbit, and it corresponds to this energy. If we go a little bit further, we get a second energy state. If we go to a third, fourth, fifth, so on and so forth, we'll start to see in general for electronic states that the energies start to get closer and closer and closer together as our distance increases away from the, the nucleus, or as we increase our orbit number. Well, when we look at these, for instance, the Balmer series, which starts with n equal 2. This is for hydrogen. It's our most simple atom that we look at. But if we start at n equal 2, anything for the Balmer series, it's good for us to be able to classify these, these transitions, anything on the Balmer series ends up with its final state in n equal 2. So that means it doesn't matter where we started, we're going to try to end up here, at this level. And there's a specific reason why the Balmer series is actually important, but we'll see that in just a little bit. So what that means is that we can transition from, say, n equal 3 down to n equal 2, or n equal 4 down to 2, 5 to 2. Any of these transitions are going to give us a change of energy. And this change of energy right here, from n equal 3 to n equal 2, or from n equal 4 to n equal 2, that energy, when we move that electron from that orbit to a lower orbit, it has to release energy. And that energy is going to be specific to that transition. So from going from n equal 3 to n equal 2, it's going to give us a certain energy of photon. And we know that that energy of the photon is proportional to its wavelength. So it's going to give us a specific color light. So any atom molecule that we have, all of the molecules of the same exact type, for instance, all the hydrogens, are going to have the same colors that they produce. And if you'll notice that these lines only exist at these locations. They don't exist all over the place. So we only have these discrete, these finite energies 
that we can get. You know, n equal 4 to n equal 2, n equal 3, n equal 2. We don't have 3.5 to 2 or anything in between. So we get specific colors. Well, the Lineman series um, is to the n equal 1. It has similar pattern. We just call it a different thing. And each of these are named after, for the hydrogen atom at least, they're named after uh, you know famous people to kind of discover. Well, Niels Bohr was the one who really recognized this type of pattern. We've seen transitions up from as high as n equal 30. Um, this is what we can see. Why we can determine composition of stars is because we can see what energies of these photons we're getting out. So, in general, or actually for hydrogen, we get a very famous formula. It's minus 13.6 electron volts, which is an energy unit. Uh, it, over n squared is the energy. So if we wanted to figure out the transition, we figure out where it starts for whatever n, we figure out wherever it ends with its n, with a different n, and we subtract the two. And that'll tell us the energy that's released. So when we start getting in it, uh, for the Lineman series, and things to transition to n equal 1, we have a minimum wavelength of 91 nanometers, which is very, very ultraviolet. Uh, it goes only as high as just a hair over 120 nanometers. Well, the Balmer series, which is probably the most recognizable one, starts at a minimum of 364 and goes up to just past uh, 600. And if you remember where the optical range is, optical range is pretty much right here. So we see the very characteristic four Balmer transition lines. So this is, I believe, n equal two to or n equal three to n equal two. 4 to 2, 5 to 2, and 6 to 2. This is 7 to 2, and all these things go up until we come in. If an atom has uh, is an electronic state that doesn't have it uh, bound and it comes into it, the unbound state energy is would be this energy. Uh, there's more, you know, 2n equal 3 to n equal 4 and n equal 5. These aren't as important. The Balmer series is most important because it's in the visible range. So if we actually look at this, if we take a spectrometer and look at these lines, we'll start to see, say for hydrogen, we'll start to see one, two, three, four. You know, we can start to see all of these different lines. And there's this would be looking at the Lineman series. Or sorry, this would be looking at the Lineman series. So we get, at least in this picture, three. Helium, it's a little bit more complicated of a molecule. It has two electrons. We get this. Argon, another noble gas, gives us a uh, different series. You can start to see these different lines come on. Um, nitrogen, very complicated pattern because of its electronic structure. Same thing. Neon gives us a bunch of different transitions. So all of these different ones, these are very characteristic for it. And this is a different type of light that's produced than, say, black body radiation. So this one all bases off of what energy is the atom in, what energy does it end up in, and that difference of energy is normally corresponding to a specific wavelength.